Today, we become legends. Hey, my name's Inter, welcome back to the channel, and you guys overwhelmingly voted in the poll that I should update the alignment chart videos for the current meta and all the new items and reworks and stuff like that. And so that's what we're going to be doing in today's video. If you enjoy these kind of videos, um, definitely drop a like and also subscribe for the future ones that are going to be coming. I'm going to be doing magical damage as well and probably tank. Maybe Bruiser, although I'm not sure how many Bruiser items are even left in the game at this point, so I may combine Tank and Bruiser, we'll see about that. Uh, let me know in the comments uh, how you feel about that, and also starter items as well. We're going to be doing alignment charts for all that stuff with the updated versions, so uh, yeah, definitely subscribe for those. But without further ado, let's just give a quick explanation of how these work, uh, since it's the first one. So basically, these alignment chart videos, they're not like your typical tier list. Basically, I have the items down here, and there's two axes here. There's early to late game, which is on the x-axis here, so the further to the right of the chart you are, it's more of a late game item, and further towards the left, more of an early game item. And the same thing goes for the y-axis here vertically, so... Uh, um, more towards the top of the chart, you're more ability based, more towards the bottom of the chart, you're more basic attack based. And obviously those two ax axes combine, so for example, if I was to grab Transcendence here and say it's an early game ability based item, you know, it will be up in the top left, but for example, this isn't true, if it was a late game basic attack based item, it would be in the bottom right. But yeah, let's just jump right in. So in terms of actually where Transcendence goes, it's definitely more early game, you know, it's a stacking item, you do want to get it online pretty early on. I'm not going to place it fully towards the left though, because sometimes, especially in jungle, um, ADCs, you know, ADCs that go trans, they normally want it first item but in jungle you can often go this item like second or even third in your build and just get it stacked relatively quickly so it's not completely an early game item but it is pretty early game so probably around here and then in terms of ability based and basic attack based it's definitely more ability based you know there's no like attack speed or basic attack item effects on this it's purely just power and it's mostly built on the ability based hunters so sometimes you can build it in a more auto attack based hunter build as well and obviously uh, ability based assassins too so we'll, we'll drop it like pretty high up on the ability base we'll, we'll put it about there and so hopefully you guys uh, have an understanding now of how this works so arandite definitely more of a mid to late game item i would say um usually building arandite sort of at earliest third slot maybe fourth or fifth slot or something like that on the gods that make good use of it um and it is more of an ability based item comes with very high power has cooldown reduction on it uh works work really well on characters that kind of engage with their ultimate and then release all their other abilities for that bonus damage uh, you don't really see Arandite built on, like, any auto attackers, pretty much. Uh, we'll probably put it about here, I would say, because it's not really a super late-game item. You can kind of build it mid-game, which will be, like, here, but it, it is skewed slightly towards the late-game, so we'll drop it around there. I see... Definitely an early game item. You know, this is kind of the rush for hunters at the moment uh, instead of devos. Uh, you're definitely going to get like either first or maybe second after like a transcendence or something like that. That's been quite popular in the past. And it is definitely more basic attack based. You know, comes with some attack speed, has uh, lifesteal and more lifesteal on the passive, which obviously for physicals, uh, lifesteal doesn't work on abilities, standard lifesteal. So uh, definitely more basic attack based and a pretty early game item. I'd say it's probably even a little more early game than Transcendence, to be honest, because Trans, as I said, you can get away with going at, like, second or third slot in um, in Jungle, um, even though Hunters do rush it first, whereas Asi is basically always rushed first or maybe second in your build, so probably a little bit more early game than Transcendence, and definitely very basic attack base, for sure. We'll drop it there. Atalanta's bow, so recently got reworked to no longer have crit and stuff. I think it no longer has lifesteal as well, maybe, but it has, like, some stats that work a bit better in, like, a kin size build, for example. Um, I would say it's a pretty mid game item. I feel like Atalanta's Boy is something you get, you know, after maybe your, your starter item. I feel like Atalanta's Boy is something you get, you know, maybe after your stacking item or like your early lifesteal, like Asi and maybe something else, you know, maybe some pen or something like that. And then you go into Atalanta's Boy kind of like in the middle of your build. So I think in the middle of early and late game is perfect for this. Maybe even slightly skewed towards late game. And it's very basic attack based, you know, it comes with some attack speed. That passive uh, is mainly there for, for to allow you to like continue to chunk people down with basic attacks to get that extra movement speed. And yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll probably drop it around there. Bladed Boomerang. Um, a new crit item, of course, this one have been on the previous alignment chart videos, um, crit in general is a little bit more late game focused, like most crit items you're going to be wanting a bit later in your build when you have some of your more core stats online that you really want, like a bit of power, a bit of lifesteal, a bit of attack speed, a bit of pen maybe, and then you kind of go into your crit items, rage is a little bit of an exception, which we'll get into, um, in a little bit, but I'd say this is more, probably a little bit more late game than Atalanta's bow even. And then obviously it's crit, it's very basic attack based, it even has some attack speed on it as well, the passive requires you to land basic attacks, it's extremely basic attack based, as with most crit items, because obviously you can't crit on abilities, uh, generally. Bloodforge is a really interesting one, because you can kind of make arguments for it to be everywhere on this chart. 
It has been popular as an early game rush in the past. There have been metas where ADCs, when Devils was weak, would just rush Bloodforge first item. It has happened, so you could make an argument for it being early game. Uh, you can obviously make an argument for it being late game, because, you know, it's a late game luxury item, quite expensive, um, comes with a lot of power, and obviously that passive, you're going to be wanting getting consistent kills and team fights for it to be good, so it makes sense to put it late game. And then it can be thought of as ability-based, you know, pretty popular on junglers sometimes, if you're wanting to get some uh, extra, like, shields in team fight so you can run through people uh, high power as well but you could also argue for it to be basic attack based because it has a lot of life steal and the power is still really nice for basic attackers as well so really this could kind of go anywhere but i think i will skew it slightly more towards late game and slightly more towards ability based purely because of the amount of power that it has but like the life steal is also very good for basic attackers too so it's very hard to place this one to be honest and it will be kind of towards the middle but we won't put it like fully late game purely because in past metas it has been an early game rush and it might well be again depending on how the meta changes. Brawler's Beat Stick. Uh, extremely ability based. Uh, basic attackers basically are never going to build this item. You need to hit abilities to apply the passive. It has very high power, good pen. Uh, and it's very early game as well. You know, it's a flat pen item. You want flat pen in basically your first or second slot, pretty much. Maybe your third slot. Uh, after that, it starts to, like, fall off as people get more scaling defenses and support auras start to come online and stuff like that. Uh, flat pen, you know, against an 80 defense squishy in the late game is nowhere near as good as flat pen against a 30 defense squishy in the early game. So, of course, you want that uh, early in the game. This is probably maybe even more early game than Transcendence or around the same area. And then, uh, yeah, it's probably even more ability-based than Transcendence since Trans can sometimes be built on auto attacking hunters just to get your power up and have the mana and stuff like that and then you go to Arcee. Uh so yeah definitely more ability based than trans and uh, probably more early game as well I would say. Deathbringer another crit item this one is even more late game than bladed boomerang it's generally the last crit item you'll go in your build to give you that extra oomph also has glyphs which make it even more expensive uh, it's already an expensive late game luxury item uh, and it's definitely more basic attack based of course with uh, being uh, for uh, for hunters, probably I would say slightly less basic attack based than Bladed Boomerang, considering Bladed Boomerang's passive needs basic attacks and it has attack speed on it and stuff like that. Whereas um, Deathbringer just has high power and crit basically, and also one of its glyphs does reduce your ability cooldowns as well. So uh, more late game and slightly more basic attack based than um, than Bladed Boomerang. More crit, we have a uh, Demon Blade here, one of the core crit items that people are building right now. Uh, again, pretty late game, but probably a bit less late game than Deathbringer. This is typically the item you would go after, like, building your Bloody Boomerang or your Rage to get, like, your high crit chance online. Then you go into Wind Demon to get a bit of attack speed and pen and stuff like that. Just generally useful stats on this item. And yeah, I would argue it's a little bit more basic attack based than um, Deathbringer. Maybe not quite so much as Bloody Boomerang, though. So if we drop it kind of in the middle of these, I feel like that's a pretty fair place for it. You know, obviously you do need to land the crits to get the extra uh, passive benefits and it does have attack speed on it, but it's probably not as basic attack based as Bladed Boomerang. Devourer's Gauntlets. Um, probably going to slam this all the way to the left in terms of early game. I never see this item built anywhere outside of very first slot. Um, it's generally just a bit hard to get stacked up uh, if you don't do that. Obviously, most popular on ADCs. Occasionally, you might see like solo laners building this, especially when they added the 10 pen and it was really broken, but mostly an ADC item. And then it's very basic attack based. You know, it does have high power, granted, um, but it you know, the lifesteal is really what you're looking for in terms of basic attacks, not for abilities because uh, it doesn't apply to it. Um, it probably is less basic attack based than Asi though, so maybe we'll move Asi down a bit. If we put Devos like here and move Asi slightly down, because Asi is a little bit more basic attack based, you know, has more lifesteal when you have the passive and also has attack speed on it. Dominance, very basic attack based item, of course, you know, the 15% pen on its passive only applies to your basic attacks, it has attack speed on it and stuff, and it is generally a bit more late game just because percent pen is more late game, you know, in the same way that with Brawler's Beat Stick, flat pen is better early because people have less defenses, percent pen is better late because people have more defenses and you're shredding a bigger percentage, uh, not a bigger percentage, but like a bigger flat number on your percentage basically. Um, how late game is it is the question. Probably somewhere around where the crit items will get online, but maybe even a little bit later than some of these. Maybe like in between Deathbringer and uh, Demon Blade, because you do generally build dominance quite late in the game when you start to need that percent pen. And then in terms of basic attack based, it's kind of just like all the way down here, really. I mean, it has high power to be fair, but other than that, it's purely a basic attack based item. You know, the passive only applies to basic attacks, has attack speed, that kind of stuff. Fail not, an interesting item, uh, an interesting crit item that people have been starting to pick up a little bit more lately on those Jingwei builds. Those are pretty funny. Uh, probably built around the same time you would build Bladed Boomerang and Demon Blade, so probably somewhere around here. And then it is mostly basic attack based, you know, giving crit and stuff like that, but it does have cooldown reduction and some decent power um, and requires you to cast your ultimate for the passive. So it's not quite as basic attack based as some of the ones down here. 
I'll probably land it somewhere like in the middle of Demon Blade and um, Blade of Boomerang in terms of early and late game, and then a little bit more uh, ability based than those ones. Golden Blade, heavily basic attack based, of course has that passive that makes your basic attacks AoE and is mostly used on uh, characters with bad clear like Amaterasu or Arachne or Mercury or something like that for like jungle or solo lane clear. Very basic attack based and very early game. If you're going Golden Blade, you're rushing it first item. I don't really see much point in getting it other than that. You need it for that early game clear and then oftentimes you even sell it late game. So it probably is like right to the left in terms of um, early and late game. And then it's probably more basic attack based than Devo, so we'll, we'll ram it. Honestly, do we just ram it in the bottom left? I feel like there's no item that is more early game basic attack based than Golden Blade, so I think we'll just drop it right here. Uh, we are overlapping slightly. Maybe I'll just move Devo's a little bit just so you can see it. Uh, Griffin Wing Earrings, an interesting item. You know, not too many people build this. The stats on it are kind of competitive now that they've buffed it a few times. Um, I would say it's a little bit more late game focused, you know, mainly when your your basic attacks are really coming online. You have some of your other core stats online, like your, your pen and your lifesteal and stuff like that is when you're going to be building this. And then it is, of course, very basic attack based. Um, I think we'll drop it probably somewhere around here. Again, I'm kind of covering stuff up, but I don't want to move the placements of things so they're inaccurate just so you can see them on the on the chart. I'm sure people can tell that's Bladed Boomerang, right? Maybe. Uh, haste and Katana, obviously very basic attack based, you know, on the same tree as Golden Blade. Uh, the passive, you know, giving you haste, removing the basic attack movement penalty also has attack speed on it as well. Um, in terms of early to late game... I honestly don't really see this item built. I feel like you kind of buy it mid-game, though. You know, once you've got a little bit of your core stats online, maybe you're a Golden Blade user as well, you've gone for that, and then maybe something else in between. You know, maybe you're getting this in, like, third or fourth slot. Uh, so probably somewhere in the middle of the chart, to be honest, maybe slightly towards the right. And then it's mostly basic attack-based. Um, probably somewhere down here or something like that. That probably fits. All right, we've had a lot of um, basic attack based items, which is why this section is looking quite busy right now. But um, we've got some ability based items coming up here. So Heartseeker, generally more of a late game item. Uh, you know, it's relatively expensive, comes with quite high power and does uh, damage based on percent max health. So when enemies have more health in the late game, this is going to be more valuable to you. Also has like the power scaling requirement where you need a certain amount of power to get it online. So you're going to want some power earlier in your build before you buy this. So definitely a more late game item and it's basically fully ability based. There's no auto attack stats on this at all other than like the power i guess if you count that uh so we'll probably drop it like around here i would say it's very ability based and quite a late game item as well hydra's lament so believe it or not hydra's lament is not a basic attack based item even though it's passive does rely on on you using basic attacks it's purely for auto attack cancelers uh, which are ability based damage dealers that weave in a basic attack in between their abilities uh hydra's lament is great for that and it's generally more of an early game item you know with hydra's it does have percent pen on it now so like you could argue that it is a little bit more late game for that reason but usually you'll go like flat pen straight into hydra's or like flat pen into maybe something else like transcendence and then into hydra's so it's generally slightly skewed early game but because it has percent pen and it's still a useful effect to have even in the late game uh, i'll leave it like a little bit to the left but not like fully to the left and then in terms of ability based and auto attack based i guess we'll put it slightly below transcendence since it does require you to use auto attacks for its passive it's just it is a more ability based item it's purely for air cancelers Jotun's Wrath, um, probably in a similar place to Brawler's Beatstick. You know, usually you go Jotun's if you don't need Brawler's, and you go Brawler's if you do need Brawler's. They're basically built in the same slot. Flat pen, early game. Uh, Jotun's probably, you could argue, is like even more ability-based because of how much cooldown reduction it has, and the glyph that gives you cooldown reduction, and the other glyph that gives you ability lifesteal. So we'll probably throw it around here. Um, realistically, it isn't necessarily more early game than Brawler's. I'm just trying to not cover everything up here, so we'll, we'll put them basically on top of each other. They fill a very similar role. It's just, do you need anti heal? Get brawlers. If you don't, get Jones. They're built in the same place. Oh, this is ball. Back to some attack speed items here. So definitely more basic attack based, of course. I mean, the passive does scale on power, so you do want a little bit of power to make good use of it. But it is more basic attack based. Only has attack speed on the base item as well. Uh, generally a bit more of a late game item, I feel like, with Obo. Um, a lot of people make the argument that you could rush it and it helps with wave clear and stuff like that. I don't think that's really a great application of the item. It's generally more late in the game when you have some power and you can get that extra damage from the passive effect and utilize the attack speed in, like, a kin size build or something like that. Uh, generally built sort of, like, fourth or fifth item, maybe last item, potentially, but usually about fourth or fifth. Uh, we'll drop it around, like, here, and then it's pretty basic attack based, um... How do we not cover everything up here? If I drop it like there, you can kind of still see what's underneath it. It would be better if these icons were a bit smaller, but I don't think you can adjust the uh, like icon size on the site. Even if you submit an icon that's like of a lower resolution, it just scales it back up to this normal size, I think. Kin size is an interesting one. So obviously it's going to be way down here on the basic attack base, but there have been metas where you would rush kin sizes like your first or second item. 
it's not really the most common use of the item, so I am going to still skew it towards the late game. You know, generally in most builds, you're building kin size like 4th, 5th, or 6th item for the most part. You know, once you've got some attack speed and pen online to support its powerful passive effect is when you're going to be building this. But it is worth noting that, you know, there have been matters where like Kali would rush kin size first item in the jungle, or like some hunters would even rush kin size early game, like maybe Devo straight into kin size. That's been a thing in the past. Uh, but yeah, generally more skewed towards late game and very basic attack based. Um, probably like one of the most basic attack based items, you know, it's basic attack on the effect and it also gives attack speed and stuff. All right, Rage. So the most early game crit item, you know, most crit items, of course, do skew towards the late game. You're generally going to want to get your other stats online first before you start going into crit to kind of support, you know, get some power to support high damage basic attacks and stuff like that. Uh, but Rage is the most early game of the crit items, you know, with Rage, you're generally grabbing it like you'll usually go like some kind of like early game break item like RC or maybe you're stacking or something like that and then another item and then rage in like your third slot stuff like that so uh, we'll probably drop it around the middle actually and then it's obviously more basic attack base it does have very high power and I guess you could kind of make an argument for rage being used on some more ability based builds you know you just go like rage and malicious deathbringer on like an ability based character but that's not really the meta use for it it's mostly used on basic attack hunters uh, for the crit builds Serrated so Edge, a pretty interesting one, a very balanced item with a lot of useful stats and also pretty balanced in terms of um, ability based and basic attack based because uh, it does have life steal on it which is a cost for basic attacks and you do want to be sort of casting all your abilities then basic attacking with this item to get like the maximum amount of uh, the effect. Uh, in terms of early late game, it has percent pen, uh, a little bit expensive, I would skew it more towards late game, but it's not a complete late game item, this is usually like a 4th or 5th slot kind of build. And then I'll skew it towards ability based, because it's generally just built on those like ability based gods, but you can also make use of it on auto attack gods as well, you know, Mercury likes this item for example, but also you can kind of get away with going it on like Thor or something like that, you know, Arachne loves this as well as a more basic attack example. But I think it does skew slightly more towards ability based for the overall stats of the item, but of course does have life steal on it as well, so that's so uh, nice for auto attackers. Shadow Drinker, one of the worst items in the game. Honestly, this thing's so trash, uh, but this is not a tier list for items. If you want to see that, let me know, but uh, this is the alignment chart. So probably more of an early game item, I would say, given that it has flat pen. Uh, the effect is probably more useful in late game, to be honest. It's a bit of a weird item, because if it had percent pen, it would definitely be more usable as a late game item, but it has flat pen, so you generally want to build it like earlier in the game. But the effect is better used sort of a little bit later when you can be getting some consistent kills and team fights and stuff like that. Uh, kind of a hard one to place, and it generally is more ability-based. Um, we'll drop it, like, here, I guess. I think that's pretty fair. Silver Branch Bow, so very basic attack-based. Um, gives you power for spamming a crap ton of attack speed in your build. You know, usually useful in, like, your full attack speed, kin size builds and stuff like that. Uh, and generally more late game as well, because obviously you're going to want to be already at, like, around 2.5 attack speed before you buy this item uh, to make use of its passive effect. So generally pretty late game, I would say. Uh, we'll drop it somewhere around, like, here, maybe? Soul Eater, so probably dead in the current patch. Uh, got absolutely destroyed on its effect. But again, this is not this is not a power tier list. This is a alignment chart. So Soul Eater obviously built very early game. You know, Soul Eater, if you're buying it, it's usually your first item, maybe your second item after, like, Flat Pen or something like that. Um, but yeah, usually built on solo laners, like ability based solo laners that want a bit sustained, but occasionally sees play on some junglers like Pele and maybe Thanatos, where it's built a little bit later than first item, so we won't put it all the way to the left, but it is a pretty early game item, and then obviously it's heavily ability based, um, comes with ability lifesteal specifically, you know, physicals normally can't get that. And so, yeah, very ability-based item and pretty early game as well. Sphinx Baubles, not really used too much. Um, probably more ability-based given that it gives you extra cooldown reduction to spam out your abilities more. And then generally a bit more late game. Kind of like Silver Branch Bow, you need support for this item in your build already. You need to already be at 40% when you buy this, otherwise you're not even using the uncapped effect because uh, it gives 10% itself. So you want to be at 40% and then you buy this, it has 10% and ups your cap by 10%, you're at 50%. Uh, that's generally when you want to buy this. So a little bit more late game when you've got some cooldown reduction already sorted in your build. And definitely more ability based as well. Alright, final three items here. We have the Executioner. So percent pen, generally built a little bit later in the game. Sometimes you'll see this in ADCs where they'll build it like second or third item. But generally it's like third or fourth is when this is going to kind of come online. And obviously very basic attack based. You know, it has attack speed and the passive percent pen is, is actually only for landing basic attacks. It won't only apply to your basic attacks because it's protection reduction. So it's not like dominance. But uh, obviously you need to basic attacks to stack up its passive effect. So we'll drop it somewhere around here. Hopefully you can still see that's bladed boomerang. You probably have to have some smite knowledge to realize, uh, to spot that item and know what it is. But hopefully if you've watched all the way through, you know it's bladed boomerang. You know, maybe we can just troll some of the people that skip to the end of the video, right? But there's this little, little bit of bladed boomerang poking out. 
The Crusher, so used to be a very early game item along the lines of Jordan's Wrath and um, Brawler's Beatstick because it had flat pen on it, but now they've changed the flat pen to percent pen and given a little bit of extra power scaling instead of flat damage to the passive effect. It's become a little bit more of a late game item, but you can absolutely still get this in like the middle of your build and be completely fine with it. Uh, and in terms of ability and basic attack base, it's also relatively balanced. It skews more towards ability based. You know, the passive requires you to hit abilities. It has high power, uh, but it does have some attack speed on it and is a little bit more useful on like, you know, you, this is really good for like uh, ability based hunters to get a little bit of extra attack speed or just uh, ability based assassins to get a little bit of extra for like your yeah, auto attack cancelling and stuff like that. Uh, so it definitely skews more ability based, but it's not as ability based as some of the other items that we got on here, like Heartseeker or something like that. And yeah, I think I'll drop it just right in the middle. Y you generally build this like right in the middle of your build. It can be built a bit more late game as well when you have more power online to support the passive effect, but it's a, it's a pretty like middle of the build item, I would say. And finally, we have Titan's Bane. So very ability based, of course. Uh, the passive applies to like your first ability to get extra percent pen on that, and it has generally quite high power. Uh, basically the go-to for like tank shred in the late game for ability based you know hunters or assassins and very late game of course you know it's basically it is a percent pen item you know it has some power but that's basically all it has power and a ton of percent pen so you're generally building this very late game probably around the time you would also build heart seeker and it's probably um a little bit less ability based than heart seeker but it's pretty close so we'll drop it like around there and yeah, that's the full alignment chart. Uh, we have a little bit of a concentration down in the late game basic attack section, but that generally makes sense because basic attack items are mostly for hunters and hunters play for that late game. So a lot of their items are kind of skewed towards the late game. And the ability based ones have a little bit more of an even spread up here. But yeah, hopefully this helps you guys out in terms of building. I feel like these kind of videos... They're good for sort of newer players or intermediate players that don't really know when to build like specific items, you know, with build order and stuff like that. You know, you'll know that like Devos, I mean, Devos is a fairly obvious one that you build it early game, but you'll know that like Assy is early game, Golden Blade is early game, uh, you know, the flat pen items, they're all early game as well. And you know that a little bit of these are more late game and you know whether to be building them on more basic attack based characters like Hunters or like basic attacking assassins like Kali, Bakasura, or you'll know whether to be building them more on like your Ulas or your Thors and stuff like that. So yeah, hopefully this one helped you out. Uh, let me know which alignment chart you want to see next. I'll have a little read of the comments and maybe decide on that. We've got starter items, magical damage, uh, tank, and probably just that. I don't think I'm going to do a bruiser one because there's so little bruiser items left in the game after the changes. So I'll probably just end up doing tank and including the bruiser items in the tank section. And yeah, catch you guys in another video later on. Have a great day and peace out, you nerds.